Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Tommy Robbins is with us. Two more segments. And he's a real man. So he's not talking about what happened to him. But we need to get into that to realize the persecution going on. But imagine a Hollywood movie where a gentleman 12, 13 years ago sees little girls being trafficked, says that Muslim men are organizing them. They never say Muslim. They always say Asian. Organizing them into these rape groups. And then it starts happening. It starts being proven it's happening. And like dominoes, thousands per town. And, and the government and then the Asian men organizing, the Muslim men organizing the girls for sex. You got the white guys coming in, others having sex with them. This is the known pedophilia of the UK. It's just the religion of the elite over there. I particularly care about women as an instinctive level. And it enrages me to watch the left and their obsession with abusing women and then defending radical Islam. Well, and their obsession with the, the Me Too movement, when I, I hear so many comments about someone said something sexist or a massive deal was made out of the fact that someone made a comment. And I think we've got children dying, children missing, being raped by their thousands in every single town and city, and you're silent. I, I think I'm in the winning seat, and I've said that because everything I've tried to do for 10 years... And I'd be willing to sacrifice my life to bring the change that's needed. I'll put things into perspective. Um, I just spent two and a half months in prison on solitary confinement away from my children. So, yes, that was not, that was not good. It hasn't been a good effect. But then I look at members of, uh, of the British public who sign up for our armed forces or the American armed forces, and they leave their children, they kiss them goodbye, and they go on six-month tours. Um, so when I, I just view everything... I may have been in jail. It may have been terrible. There wasn't bullets passing my head every day. No, you day. said it. That's it. This is a war for our own homelands. We are soldiers in the information war. And if I'm morally right, I'll do anything. <laughs> I will go anywhere and I will not face or care about the consequences of the problems I'm talking about if I'm morally right. And, that's the, and once you go past that uh, as a moral compass, what we're doing is trying to save the future of our culture, our children, our country, our history, a thousand years of history in this land that I'm sitting in. And, and, and if, if someone could show me, which I've, I've repeatedly, after meeting, after meeting, after meeting with different lawyers, all different lawyers, <laughs> I've said, tell me what problem there is with what I said. No one can. All they can say is, yes, but it broke this, this restriction. So tell me why there's that restriction. <laughs> If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. The content of one stream is all I've been arrested for breach of the peace. I've been arrested for breach of the peace. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. You've all watched this. Can you get me a solicitor? Can you get me a solicitor? Can you just turn off your light? Can you get can you get me a solicitor? Turn off your light feed, please. Yeah. Do you understand what I've just talked about? Yeah. No, can you explain it again? The first suspicion causing a breach of the peace. Well, what does that mean? 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 I've told the police that we're doing the case. Yeah. 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 Ye
And then we've got a big exclusive uh, breakdown as well coming up on 9-11. Uh, it's, it's really good to have Tommy here. You know, I, I saw him go into jail and he came out 30 pounds lighter. And the things he went through were amazing. And he's here today uh, to just talk about the battlefront and the acid attacks and the stabbings and the shootings and the bombings that we see happening constantly and the attempts to outlaw exposing radical Islam, something he 12 years ago as a business owner, a small town in England, saw happening. So, Tommy, it's really great to have you here. And, uh, you know, I know you've gone through a lot, already put in jail for a year before for exposing this, put back in for three months. And I know you've literally got PTSD from it. But, you know, we're all really, really proud of you, my friend. Yeah, Alex, I'd like to take the opportunity. I know it's the first time I've come back on, but to thank you and to thank all of your all of your watches and the campaign to thank there was a, a movement that was created from my arrest, which is the I took I took satisfaction at that whilst I was in prison because I know that the reason they do this or the reason they've done this to silence and to stop the debate and to stop us raising concerns. And seven minutes that video you just played then, seven million people end up watching it in that in the next in in the next 48 hours from when I was arrested. So yeah. I, I, I sat from prison and I received mail, so much mail, so much support. And um, I know many of, many of the comments were commenting on the support you'd shown me, Alex, and your show had shown me. So thank you personally for that. Now, I want to thank the listeners. Now, again, Tommy, you never talk about yourself, but begin at the beginning with, 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 with what you witnessed, what you saw, why you went public, why you saw the men grooming the young girls. I mean, I, I, you know, I see the headlines where they say, you know, 14-year-old girl had sex with 100 men in captivity. No, she was raped. So there's just, and it says Asian men. No, it's it's not Chinese or Japanese men. It's not Vietnamese men. They're not doing that. They have honor on average. It's Islamic men. And that's the whole culture. So, so I see these headlines. We even have a clip of that. It makes me particularly sick. So just start wherever you want because this is your big global second interview after Tucker Carlson and you've taken well you mean rest so wherever you want to go with this go with it so the the level of rape the level of abuse this isn't just sexual gratification for the men doing it they are literally doing everything they can to destroy the victim to torture the victim they are and this has gone on in i think there's in every single town city in the UK that has an Islamic community, there are these rape squads. And the, the word used in Britain is grooming, which sounds like something cute, doesn't it? Grooming. Like you're grooming your dog. This is actually a rape jihad by an invading army. Now, what these men do to some of these victims, if I just talk to you about some of the cities, in one of the cities in the north of England, they took a young 12-year-old girl and they stuck a claw up. When they, when they got her pregnant, through repeated rapes, they took her to a field and they put a claw hammer up inside her to give her an abortion. They have taken young girls and put their tongues on tables and put nails through them. They have branded young 11-year-old children where they've heated up iron rods to the, with the letter M and they've scolded on their bum because that 11-year-old girl was the property of Mohammed. Now, during all of this, Families whose children have become victims have gone to the police, they've gone to the authorities, they've cried and they've begged for help. Rather than getting help, now these stories, when you read them, and it, finally, when we first started talking about this a decade ago, we were branded as extremists and racists and people simply did not want to believe it. Now we have government reports and government investigations that show and expose the truth in all of this. We've had young, young fathers. Two of their daughters are in a house with a dozen Muslim men. Their, their daughters are 12 and 13 years old. The fathers have got together and they've gone to get their girls back. The police have turned up. They arrested the dads. They leave the girls. So people, and, and this, is, this has gone on from one end of our country to the other. And only... Since 2010, since 2010, there was a journalist at Times who worked for the Times newspaper who he actually openly admits that he, he had been told a decade before 
He had had all the information a decade before about these gang rapes of young children. But only when he saw us, who he brands as far right, only when he saw us march in the country did he then think we have to take this back, this issue back from the far right. So he didn't think young children are being raped by gangs of men. We must stop it. The only time he acted, and this is his own words, Andrew Norfolk, his name was, and people talk in our country like he should have a knighthood for exposing it. The truth, in his own words, he only began to deal with it because he saw the marches of people he didn't like the look of, who he described as far right. And by what I say is don't like the look of, what he meant was young working class men. And the reason we were marching was because we know it's happening to all of our daughters and our sisters in our communities. And let's go back to now, that moment because you, 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 you literally are one of the main leaders in Europe now, even beyond Nigel Farage, true working class patriot, successful tanning salon, everything. I know your stories, repeat it. You're watching them load little girls in cars with, with men to rape them. You, you, you talk to the girls later, and you start kicking their asses. First, you call the cops, nothing happens. And I, I the same thing. I see somebody loading a 10-year-old, 12-year-old girl in who's crying. I'm going to beat the hell out of them. It's, and they ban me, saying I'm being abusive. No, a man standing up for little girls is not abusive. If I see a pedophile picking a girl up, I'm going to break their goddamn jaw. Excuse me. Do you know how far back this goes, Alex? So... If you, look at, if you look at the Sikh community in the UK, now the Sikh community who have come here, embraced our culture, embraced our identity, worked hard, business owners, um, never a threat to our nation, that, their daughters were being targeted in a similar fashion. And they had to set up a gang. This is all documented. They had to set up a gang in the 1980s called Shilla Punjab, SP, where... Sikh men. So even up till even up till two years ago, 19 Sikh men were put in prison. They were put in prison for going and defending their daughters. This and the media always play this down. But they were Stay right there. The cuckolding in the left, sacrificing our daughters on the altar of Islamic rape gangs. Their favorite fetish. We'll be back. Welcome back. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Tommy Robbins is with us. Two more segments, and he's a real man. So he's not talking about what happened to him, but we need to get into that to realize the persecution going on. But imagine a Hollywood movie where a gentleman 12, 13 years ago sees little girls being trafficked, says that Muslim men are organizing them. They never say Muslim, they always say Asian. Organizing them into these rape groups. And then it starts happening. It starts being proven it's happening. And like dominoes, thousands per town. And, and the government and then the Asian men organizing, the Muslim men organizing the girls for sex. You got the white guys coming in, others having sex with them. This is the known pedophilia of the UK. It's just the religion of the elite over there. And so they tried to mentally destroy him and all the things they did. So I want to get back into his awakening and what he saw and how vindicating it is that this has all been proven right, but also arresting him for not even going in the trial, but saying... See, I'm right. There's a giant pedophilia trial happening in there. And and, and using these new anti-free speech laws to do it. Uh, because, Tommy, I want you to have the floor of the next two segments. You can finish up with what woke you up, what you saw, what you've been through. You've been to prison repeatedly for exposing this. But then getting into what happened to you currently. And then the big question next segment, where do you go from here? Because I know you're a brave guy. You were telling me you plan all these marches and stuff. And I'm like, man, you're a major leader now. People really respect you. And it's putting your skin in the game is why they respect you. But And being right is why they respect you. But have some caution here because they want to kill you as you experienced in those months where you lost 30 pounds. So, uh, Tommy, just wherever you want to take this interview, you're in control now. So, basically, the, these gangs were operating freely for 30 years. And our country witnessed the conspiracy of silence from police leaders, community leaders, religious leaders, to facilitate this rape. And what's come out in the reports is the reason, the reason why the police didn't act, the reason why social services, the organisations put in to protect children, the reason why they allowed, they actually allowed, when you read the reports, they allowed gangs of men, Muslim men, to come and pick the children up from, from care homes, sit outside in their car picking 12-year-old children up take them away for three or four days and drop them back in a disheveled, 
state, and no one fought justice or no one fought to do something. Anyone in a position of power who tried to whistleblow and identify these problems was quickly sidelined, fired, and targeted. Now, this went on across our whole country. The two major cities that people hear about across the world is Rotherham, where 1,400 young children were identified for a charity. So these are just the children that this one charity dealt with during the 20-year period. So 1,400 children, <laughs> the number will way exceed that. Now, in Rotherham, there are only 3,500 Muslim men. Now, when you read the reports of how many people were raping these girls, you can ask yourself, so in Rotherham has a Muslim population of, I think, about 3%. Many other towns and cities in the UK have Muslim populations of 30%. Yet the government have refused. There's an area called Keithley near Bradford, which is a predominantly Muslim area. Now, the government have refused to do a similar style report in any of those largely Muslim areas. The only areas they've done it is where there's not many Muslims. Another city called Telford, where I think there's been three or four of the victims have been murdered. Their, how their families have been set on fire when they tried to speak out. Um, there was a thousand young girls identified in Telford. There's not many Muslims in Telford either. So if you see the size of the problem in the two cities that they've looked at, which doesn't have a large Muslim population, you can only begin to imagine the size and the proportion of how many children have been destroyed in all the other major towns and cities. In my hometown of Luton, the police have just in the last three months made 26 arrests, backdating for child gang rape and grooming in an area of the town that we've all told them for years it's going on. A certain park called Wardown Park and Pope's Meadow Park, an area that we've been telling them it's happening, only now have they started making arrests. But this, is, I've travelled the country for the last 10 years, meeting Victims' families. One of the if I one of the conversations I had was with a father from, let's just say the northwest, from the northwest of England. <laughs> his daughter was taken, and the the Muslim male that took his daughter would ring the dad. So he'd go to the police. They'd do nothing. He'd ring the girl's dad, and whilst him and his father, so you have the Muslim male, and then you have his father with him, are gang are raping this young child, whilst ringing the victim's dad, an Englishman, and leaving the phone on the side and commenting and talking to him. Let me bring this up, because we've seen the Swedish videos and everything where they rape the little girls and videotape it as a celebration because you are not a Muslim. It is an act of jihad to rape the girl. It's, it's actually what, what, we, what, we, what we tried to explain in this country was this is actually the first time ever We've had huge paedophile gangs, and, we've had, and there's many within Westminster, but this was the first sort of gang-related <coughs> phenomenon where brothers, cousins, brother-in-laws, fathers, and sons would share the victims. And where, when this gets exposed, rather than their family and their community be disgusted with them... They defend them. They defend them. Well, let's they expand on this, though. Out. Let's expand, because harems and all this and, and sex slavery is the big Islamic thing. It's the big business. They invaded Europe to get women slaves. I mean, I mean that's what the, the Crusades were to counter that. In fact, it was, quote, you know, to save our women, to save our God, you know, to save our crown, to save Christ, to save our children, to save our country. Uh, that's what this has all been about. And so why is the left allied with this, A, and then B, Tommy? What are they doing now as it all comes out? Because now it's everywhere and you now see vigilantes fighting back, all the rest of it. Well, I, I, I've also spoke to other, other communities, Hindu communities and, and, and Sikh communities, to hear the stories of the rapes against their daughters. And in each in every single... Because they've been putting up with it for 1,400 years. Yeah, in, in every single attack, that, that the rapists, the Muslim men, make comments about the girl's religion. So the fact that she's Sikh, the fact that she's Hindu. Now, we hear so much in this country about hate crime. We hear so much about saying bad things on Twitter or Facebook. 
Here, we have gangs of men who, every single court case, you hear the victim was called a white English slag, the victim was called a kafar, religiously, racially motivated rapes, yet none of them have ever been charged with any hate crime. Now, with regards to hate crime in the UK, and the, some of these attacks in one, in one small town. Tommy, Jackson, Tommy, you're on, you're, you're on fire here. And I had Owen coming in to announce a big thing with the Fool's Army, but he'll have to segue a little bit in the next hour. We have Paul Joseph Watson on. I'm going to do the whole hour with you. This is too important because I, I want to get into you, though. And what, what a champion. This guy will not talk about himself. Tortured in jail for a year. They try to kill him, put back in for three months, and he won't talk about himself, his website, nothing. And they're threatening to come ash and attack his family at their home. I mean, he has had to, uh, I mean, it's the real deal, folks. We talk about what InfoWars has gone through. This guy's gone through even more. All right. I just went on during the break and I said to Tommy, I said, listen, you need to talk about yourself. Okay. Because you can't get him to do it. And if, if they made a movie about Tommy Robinson, because I remember hearing about him like 12 years ago, this guy exposing rape gangs, English Defense League. He's a racist. He wasn't. And they brought in racists. He left the league. He works for the Sikhs and others. You don't have Sikhs. And I know the statistics. One of the lowest crime rates in the world. They got formed hundreds of years ago because the Islamists are trying to kill them in India. The Hindus, they're not doing anything. I mean, okay. Hindus are kind of like Texans. Maybe they don't pay their income tax. But that's about it. <laughs> so, so yeah. But, but, you know, it's not even about the genetics. Because a lot of these Arabs have similar genetics to Sikhs or people in India. It's that... It's the culture. It's what Muhammad did. Does that mean I want to have war with Islam? No. But they've got 1.8 billion people. They're about to be 3 billion in the middle of the next decade. The globalists have made their bet on them and this whole plan to repopulate Europe with Islamicists. And then we're supposed to just die and give ourselves over. So, Tommy, I want to get back into what's happening. But you've already proven it. I know you just can't be stopped to warn about the girls being raped and the kidnapping because you've got a bunch of children, I know. And, and they've been threatened with ass attack. You don't want to get into that. But Talk about just what you've been through in like a five-minute gestalt, how it began, the year in prison, taking your house, uh, the, the three months, losing all the weight, the, the, then putting you by the mosque in the jail, then throwing feces on you. And then, and, and then again, now you got a court date. Uh, I don't know what you can get into on air. But I know the inside baseball. Uh, they're wanting you to say certain things that they might send you back. So I want you to be very careful here because the world's listening. They admire you. They support you because you are the real deal. But we need to focus on Tommy, 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 Tommy Robinson online, Tommy Robinson dot online, Twitter for now. Are they banned you there yet? T Robinson, new era. Are they I'm gone, mate. I'm banned off Twitter. That's right. So we can't go there. Where are the best places to contact you first? Because everybody's so in the purse. And, 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 and talk about yourself. Talk about yourself. So from, from when I first started activism, Within the first six months, my house and my parents' houses were raided by the police three times. This become a, a common theme over the years that continued. And go back the to the town, what you were witnessing. So we, we were holding demonstrations and we were highlighting these issues. Now, the same police force that just imprisoned me outside the court case in Leeds, when we first started, I, I'd organised a demonstration in that police force. South Yorkshire Police Force is the police force that's come out and been proven as hiding all of these problems. Now, when I first come to their borough... In fact, didn't it turn out in a lot of departments, some of the leading cops are involved in the pimping? Uh, some of the leading cops were about a Muslim police officer who was actually killed in an accident, who was part of it. Um, we've seen... It, in this South Yorkshire area, I, I organise a demonstration to come and talk about these issues. But at the, at the time, these issues were not exposed. And the police, as a response, result of that, raided, arrested me at the airport, raided my wife's house with machine guns, raided my mum and dad's house, put me on false charges that meant I couldn't associate with the organisation I'd formed, gave me my bail conditions, made sure I couldn't enter their entire area. So they prevented me from holding a demonstration. They prevented me from talking about these issues. Um, once the date had gone past of our demonstration, they just dropped all the charges. I actually have it from 10 years ago in black and white writing from an independent police investigation where I put in a complaint that the police accepted what they'd done was politically motivated. They accepted the reason they'd done it was to silence me and they sent their police officers on training courses. Now, So you were politically this, persecuted. Fast forward to your year in prison, your three months, and, and now what you're facing because you may be thrown back in. 
Yeah, fast forward to, so that, that has been a common theme over 10 years. <clears throat> if we get to the most recent case, the most recent case, I went to the city of Leeds. In fact, I still have to be careful now because there's still condition on this case. Basically, when I went there, there, there there's, a, there's a court trial going on um, involving 31 people. Now, all the information I'm about to tell you now, which is the whole reason why I'm still arguing my, my innocence, <laughs> all this information is in the public domain. Now, when you read the law, the law clearly states a judge has no power to put reporting restrictions on any information that's already in the public domain. Now, what we've witnessed on the last, on the last six or seven big Muslim rape trials, <laughs> that these res reporting restrictions are put in place at the very start. And they state that there can be no reporting on this case whatsoever. Okay? Um, so then, if there was reporting, then you'd be getting the details each day of what the men said to the girls, the comments they made, and the horrific abuse that these children have suffered. By Including, the even, even mainstream news admits, a lot of dead girls. Yeah, dead, yeah plenty of dead girls. What, plenty of dead girls. Plenty of, some, plenty of girls who have never ever been found. Their bodies have just never been found. And let's be clear, we're hearing about Brett Kavanaugh with no witnesses 20, 36 years ago jumping on a girl at a party. And the same scumbag leftist media here covers up all the crap going on here against women. And, and again, I'm sick of people claiming they care about women. I have a wife. I have three daughters. I particularly care about women as an instinctive level, and it enrages me to watch the left and their obsession with abusing women and then defending radical Islam. Well, and their obsession with the, the Me Too movement, when I, I hear so many comments about someone said something sexist or a massive deal was made out of the fact that someone made a comment. And I think we've got children dying, children missing, being raped by their thousands in every single town and city, and you're silent. And you're not just silent, but you actually go out of your way. Journalists in this country... Not one of them have challenged these reporting restrictions. So these restrictions are put in place. So you could have a trial that lasts two months and you will not hear anything. <clears throat> and then when the trial finishes, they'll lift the reporting restriction and you'll get one day of news. 30 men have been convicted for raping young girls. That's it. <clears throat> you won't hear the, the details. You won't hear the ins and outs, which for every other... Why does the left cover up for Islam from Sweden to England to the U.S. and the mass raping and killing of women? The whole thing of radical Islam and its orthodoxy is enslaving women and they're subhuman. That's a fact. Why is the left in love with the true satanic patriarchy? Well, many of the time, as we've heard from the previous journalists who knew this was happening, Andrew Norfolk, <laughs> but he only acted when he saw... The, the far right or the working class were making an issue out of it. I think many journalists despise us that much, despise the working class that much, despise their own country that much. And it, it depends. It depends what newspapers you look into for where the money comes from. If you look at the Daily Mirror, we see the Saudi influence. Sure, it's a sick the form of cuckolding. It's like funny. The working class are getting their daughters sold into slavery by the Muslims. Well, they're certainly not... Um, they're certainly not. What they actually do then is they run stories about how people are racist or extremists when they march over it. In fact, but now it's all come up. So, so, so let me ask you this: <clears throat> Now that it's all coming out, what are they going to do? Because they're on their heels. They want to kill you, my friend. You've got to stay alive. We'll talk about what happened to you in prison when we come back. But let me ask you this: What are they going to do? Because it does seem like they're more and more on their heels. Nationalists are getting voted in everywhere in Europe. Common sense, life force. Self-preservation is coming back. Well, I, I said this. We had a day for freedom demonstration two months before I was arrested. And I asked that question. What are they going to do? Because I, I sit there now thinking, what are they going to do next? Because essentially, I, I think I'm in the winning seat. And I've said that because everything i would tried to do for 10 years, and I'd be willing to sacrifice my life to bring the change that's needed. Now... I think their intention has been many times to let me be killed or have me be killed. Because that's, But now if that happens, after seeing the world response and the response in Britain and across the globe to my 
Hold on, we got to go to break. It's a hard break. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Come back with the incredible answer. Talk about a cliffhanger. This isn't Netflix. It isn't movies. This is a real hero. This is a guy they've tried to kill. This is a guy tortured in prison repeatedly. This is a guy that lost his house. His wife and children facing acid attack. This is a real man right here. Imagine a Hollywood movie where a guy 12 years ago is running a tanning salon in a little town in England and sees 10, 12, 13-year-old girls crying for mommy being put in cars. And then he talks to the fathers and mothers. And they go, yeah, the police won't help us. Our daughters are sold into sex slavery. And then it comes out nine, ten years after he talks about it. It's happening in every town. And in many areas, the police are involved. And it's just incredible. So now he's been what, put in prison for a year because he exposed it. They tried to kill him there. Now he's put in three months, loses 30-something pounds. Recap what you've gone through and the fact that a, a, a superior court judge said... And you're the expert on English law. You've been through it, but correct me if I'm wrong. Said, okay, you were convicted in one hour of covering the pedophile gang, which again. And then, so they struck that down, but still it's got to be reheard. And I don't know how much you're allowed to say on air. You told me a lot of it yesterday in that hour-long conversation we had. So how much, because people really care about you and they want to know uh, what's going on. So how, recap what happened to you the three months in and, the, and then the latest info coming up next week. So I went for a judge in Leeds, where I was reporting on this this trial. Um, I was not asked to plead guilty or not guilty. I was refused the opportunity to speak with my lawyers. The case was not adjourned. The judge didn't even tell me what I'd done or said that amounted to contempt. And he sentenced me to prison. And then, so it took them a matter of hours to sentence me to prison, but then it took me two months to get back before a judge to put across our case to say, this is not how the British legal system should work. <clears throat> Thankfully, the highest court in the land, the Court of Appeal, agreed, and they 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 gave a scathing attack, um, a scathing report against the judge, where they said my sentence was unlawful. Everything about it was unlawful. Five, five major points were unlawful, but the point is, they didn't have to retry me. There's another case of a gentleman called West, where one thing, and one of the illegalities that the judge done on my case, he, he done five on my case. There was one illegal thing done in a gentleman called West's case, and his conviction was quashed, <laughs> and there was no retrial. They've decided to retry me at the Old Bailey. Next Thursday, I go to court at the Old Bailey in London, the most senior court of our land, the court that deals with terrorism, high-profile murders, and I'm in court for talking on my iPhone about Muslim men who are raping children. That's why I'm in court. The court case had finished. I wasn't prejudiced in a trial because... The and let's be clear. Over. Other news covered what you said and showed it. They didn't get in trouble. You were being persecuted because you are a world leader. Everything I said was in the public domain. In fact, if you look at what I said, the contempt charge... Other journalists, such as Rod Liddell, have been, have been stopped on contempt for breaching reporting restrictions. He got a £4,000 fine. I spoke to other journalists this week who clapped the trial. There was 11 men on a murder trial, and he clapped the trial due to his reporting, and he didn't face any charges. No, we, we know you're so, being railroaded, so let's talk about what you're facing next week and then what you're so planning. Next week, because Next ahead. week I face whether I walk into court, as, as I'd be told to apologise and plead guilty, so to meet the government halfway, to meet them midway, because at the minute it looks embarrassing for them because they've been proven that they're persecuting me, they've been proven that their previous trial was unlawful and illegal. So it's whether I walk into court and do that and then I get to go home, or whether I walk in, and we, which in fact I, I, I won't be doing anyway. I, I, I will walk into court with my head held up, and even if I walk out the front door there and then, my head's still held up, or if I go to prison and I come out in a matter of months or however long, then I'll still walk out with my head held up. Because um, I, the only thing I take that I'm happy with about all this, obviously I'm concerned and I'll, I'd be lying if I, if I said I wasn't worried. I don't want to go back to prison. It had an ad adverse effect on my whole family, not just well, me. So, 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 so um, let's, be, let's be clear. Tommy Robinson jailed for exposing pedophile rings and being a hero and being proven right because he's dangerous. What makes you tick? I mean, I know me. I'm not looking to be put in prison or killed or attacked or boycotted, but I know I'm right. 
And so when they attack me, it, it has the opposite. I can be totally exhausted. And so bad news comes in. And suddenly I have like five hours of incredible energy. And it reminds me of growing up in Dallas, you know, when I was a nice, sweet little kid, like 10 years old, and bullies would beat me up. And I'd come home, my dad said, well, you need to fight harder. And when I was like 11 or 12, I put one of the bullies in the hospital next time he did it, and I ended up getting in trouble. My dad got me out of it. He said, it's okay, son. We don't start fights. We finish them. What makes you at a gut level have not, not just the courage but the will to go out and do this, and, 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 and that totally scares the enemy? I put a lot of things. I, I, every time, if I ever begin to feel so, sorry for myself, I, I put things into perspective. Um, I just spent two and a half months in prison on solitary confinement away from my children. So yes, that was not that was not good. It hasn't been a good effect. But then I look at members of, uh, of the British public who sign up for our armed forces or the American armed forces, and they leave their children, they kiss them goodbye, and they go on six-month tours. Um, so when I, I just view everything. I may have been in jail. It may have been terrible. There wasn't bullets passing my head every day. No, you day. said it. That's it. This is a war for our own homelands. We are soldiers in the information war. And once we decide we're expendable, doesn't mean we want to die. We love life. But we have to decide we are expendable. And I think once you cross that road, uh, many years ago, was it not empowering when you made the decision, I'm going to go on to the end, whatever the cost is? It was empowering. And I don't fear that. I don't fear that. And that's the truth. I, I generally don't fear that because I've accepted that. I've accepted that the inevitable outcome of this path, which I've chosen, I wrote a letter to my wife when I was in prison explaining all of this to say that I'm not in this position through anything other than choice. I know what I'm doing. And I I'm not a victim, outcome. I'm a target. Yeah, I'm not their victim, I'm their target. And I'm not going to wallow in self-pity about a situation that is, is nothing in comparison to what many other people go through. Well, these little office. girls. I mean, anytime I, in the middle of the night, wake up and go, what are you doing? I think about how the globalists are pedophiles and how they hurt children, and God's just saying, do it. You claim you love me? Execute this operation. Yeah, that, that, and the other thing, the other thing, the other judgment to make all the time is, are we morally right? And, it, and if I'm morally right, I'll do anything. <laughs> I will go anywhere, and I will not face or care about the consequences of the problems I'm talking about, if I'm morally right. And that's the, and once you go past that uh, as a moral compass, what we're doing is trying to save the future of our culture, our children, our country, our history, a thousand years of history in this land that I'm sitting in, and thousands of men. If I, all I have to do for five minutes is sit and think about the previous generations of what they give and what they sacrifice, and to be honest, even what I'm doing, is nothing, or what I've been through, is nothing. We are a generation of cowards born in an era where, and I also take huge satisfaction that so many people have been bought off of the fence. They've watched what happened. This last arrest, If I, I'd like to say a, a, a thank you to Judge Marson, who put me in prison, because he has red-pilled more, more people than anyone I've ever met. He's been the most successful in bringing people to our courts. So... That, that's all I base it on, Alex. I'm sure with yourself, we're right. We're telling the truth. Um, it's, a mor it's a moral battle. It's a battle that we can't afford to lose. Um, and the rest, the consequences are really nothing in comparison to what many people And now have. we need intelligence. We need to think our steps out because you're a major general in this fight. We're going to go to break two minutes, five more minutes. I'm going to get back to your family. TommyRobinson.online. People need to support him. He's trying to develop a plan. We're trying to work with other folks to set up something so that he can really get out there and be protected when he does it. And we'll be right back after break. I've, I've got a plug, or I can't finance this whole operation. I can't finance any of it. Um, we have great products. We have great supplements. We have a lot of great things. InfoWarsStore.com. We're coming back in the final five minutes with Tommy Robinson. And Paul Watson, also from London, is going to be back. So, Tommy, stay there five minutes. We'll be back in two minutes. Survival Shield X2 is the best deep earth crystal source iodine. It's the good halogen. You learn about the iodine conspiracy and how they have all these other bad halogens they bombard you with that lower fertility, lower your brain waves, lower your IQ. X2 has been our best seller for almost six years. Uh, the old companies that drill it at up to 12,000 feet, I'm just having problems getting it. It's all part of the sabotage we're under. And the prices have gone way up. I'm not going to charge you 50, 100 bucks for this. So I've broken the contract. This is the end of X2. Now, I hope to get it back by playing hardball or with some other company. And we've got some big leads, maybe even stuff even better.
instead of 9999 But there's all sorts of DEA licenses, you name it, be able to manufacture this. So InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. 25% off through this weekend, and then it's going to be regular price till X2 is sold out. And I just hope we can reformulate it and have it back. And we got a bunch of other specials, Super Male Vitality, Cold Press, Incredible Herbs. That's 50% off. Get books, get T-shirts, get it all. It funds the operation. Stay with us. All right, Paul Joseph Watson is coming up in the next hour. He loaded for bear, incredible information to break down. Tommy Robinson is our guest. Tommy Robinson.online, true political hero, and, and, and just incredible what he's gone through. In the five minutes we have left, other points you want to get out to people, other areas you want to get into, where you're going, where you see the the political awakening, how you see the globalist striking back. Tommy Robinson. One thing I'd love to do is to just to express to individuals, to anyone who's watched this, to anyone who sent me a letter, to anyone who sent me an email. To... Yeah, just, just to let them know the effect that the support that when I went to custody, I think next Thursday I'll go back to prison. Um, and I just want people to know that the support they gave me, and I know, and, and I, I took satisfaction in the fact that many of many people who watch that, many people who watch these shows, they make a decision at some point to step over, to then start to start sharing articles, to start speaking, and and it shows courage by every single individual who's willing to do that. Because I'm fully aware of the backlash that you get off certain members of family, off of friends at work. So I wanted to just take a special moment whilst I've got the platform to thank everyone. If you're in America, if you're in Australia, if you're in Britain, if you emailed me, just to let you know for those hours that I read your words and your support, it, picks, it picked me up, it picked me up. When I sat, I used to sit on a demonstration day when there was a demonstration to free me anywhere on the globe. I'd sit and wait for the messages and the letters to come through to show me what happened on that day. So yeah, whilst I'm on the platform, just a massive opportunity, Alex, to yourself and to everyone across the world who showed me support because it meant so much. As but Tommy, said, you're I such said, a you're such a working class hero, and, I, and everybody knows that I'm not just buttering you up here. And here you say, I fully expect to go back to prison next week. What you privately told me, you said some of it on air. They want you to apologize and fall on your sword. They might set you up anyways. And so you're saying, not that you don't, you, you almost like you said, you lost 30 pounds. You said when you were in there a year, it wasn't as bad. This time it was so bad. They were throwing feces on you, all this. And, and it's not like you, I mean, you you look like a prisoner of war when you came out on Tucker right after it happened. Took a few weeks off with your family. Why are you ready to go back to prison? Why do you think you may go back? Because I think that if I was, I think it would diminish everything. Um, and to be honest, there's no, I don't see. No, but I don't want you to sell out. I, 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 but I did tell you. If you at least say, I understand the law, I think you misinterpret it, but I'll try to work within it. I don't think you should say the the, the open-throated apology they want up front. They might set you up. But, Tommy, we, man, we don't want them to kill you in there, man. No, nah, Alex, I've, got, I've gone through the look. look I, 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 I sat down with my wife. I explained to her the situation I'm in. And I said, look, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it in the sense that, um, in the sense I don't accept it. I, I don't accept that anything I said could have prejudiced that trial. No, I agree. So it comes down to will. You're not exposing pedophiles successfully. You're not going to say you did something wrong when you didn't. No, I'm not. That's it. And, and, and if, if someone could show me, which I've, I've repeatedly, after meeting, after meeting, after meeting with different lawyers, all different lawyers, <laughs> I've said, tell me what problem there is with what I said. No one can. All they can say is, yes, but it broke this, this restriction. So tell me why there's that restriction. And tell that was the judge's interpretation. Well, yeah, because the law, the law states, the law states that he cannot put an, he cannot put a restriction on well, any... Well, well here's the deal. I, I want folks to pray for you, and I want them to pray for justice, and then I want you to be safe. And you've already been on the front line long enough. As a real leader, people want to hear you in a studio, on the street some, but you've charged into battle enough, my friend. We really... At a gut level, you are more valuable to winning the hearts and minds in the rear with the gear instead of the front lines. I'll say bye to you during the break. And Paul Joseph Watson from London, England is coming up. Tommy, we love you. Tommy Robinson dot online. People support Thanks. him there. Donate there. His legal fees have been incredible. God bless you. You're a great example to us all, Tommy. Thank you very much, Alex. Cheers, man. He's going to be Thanks. back next Tuesday or Wednesday right before this critical trial. Pray for Tommy. We'll be back with Paul Watson in 60 seconds. Infowars.com. 
Tomorrow's news today. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. You're a white man. You're a white man. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Maximize your potential and take your body back with super male vitality. We're breaking the conditioning and fighting back against the globalist war on male vitality. Our ultimate non-GMO formula is sourced from powerful organic herbs that have been gathered from around the world and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. InfoWars Life wants to bring you the highest quality products. Our unique combination of ingredients is designed to assist the body in regulating proper balance and creating superior vitality in males. Support your body and mind and take yourself to the next level. Boost your vitality and energize your life. Take control of your body. Grab a bottle of Super Male Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com.